Hey, how's it going? My name's George and welcome to my channel. About four years ago, I moved from the UK to Australia and I recorded my journey over here. When I post that video, almost three years ago now, coming up for three years, I received a lot of comments and Instagram messages. The video went viral. I didn't receive a lot, but um, I received a few and they were all around a general theme, which I've broken up into five sections. And I'm gonna run through those sections today. They are jobs and what to do for work, visas, how to meet people and socialize when moving abroad, also where to live in Australia and accommodation. And then I have some bonus tips at the end. I'm also giving out some tips in each section and some of my advice and stuff I've learned along the way. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button for more travel uh, tips and travel videos as soon as we're outside of lockdown in Australia. And I also do some reviews on mostly travel related gear, some camera gear, but um, yeah, let's jump into the video. So the first section of jobs and what to do for work in Australia. This is probably the most commonly asked question along with visas. And my advice would be gain experience in your field, whatever that might be, and bring that across. Um, and I would go into the same field in Australia. It'd be much easier to gain a job if you have experience in that industry or field. Now that might sound pretty obvious. Depending on what field you're in, it'd be really hard for me to give advice unless we've had a bit of a conversation. But I would say if you're looking to get into a industry, technology is really booming worldwide and especially in Australia. So I work in tech myself outside of my unsuccessful YouTube career. I am a customer success manager for a software company and I really enjoy it. It's awesome. And there are lots of jobs in my industry in Australia, especially Sydney at the minute. So if you are thinking of an industry to get into, it's not something which is really mentioned at school, but yeah, I would say tech's just a really good industry. Along with that, finance is a really good industry, insurance, then of course you have like hospitality work in Australia is a really big one, farm work. There are lots of different avenues you can go down. One bit of advice I would give as well is take a look at industries which are currently being sponsored for permanent residency, if that's something which you're looking to get into because the Australian government only sponsor permanent residency for jobs in demand. There are multiple ones at the minute. Look up your industry online before you move. That could also be help determine what industry you would like to go into. One of my biggest tips here is to be flexible as well. So just keep an open mind, look on LinkedIn for jobs. If there is a particular company which you're interested in, Look at that company on LinkedIn, find out who the hiring manager would be and drop them a really personalized message. You could even record a video and send that across to introduce yourself, but there's nothing wrong with you know reaching out and being proactive. I find that's the best way to get in front because it's a quite high demand to get a job. Also, when it comes to jobs, just make sure your CV is up to date. That might sound pretty obvious, but it's pretty chaotic when you move countries. There's a lot going on. Your CV, you ideally want to apply for jobs when you're still in the UK, but if that's up to date and you have it all good to go, it just makes life a lot easier if you have that available on email. Also, just a quick tip, it's good to email all those important documents to yourself. So if you need to get someone to print it off or you need to send it to a family member, it's super easy. And so yeah, the power of the cloud. Yeah, cover letters are pretty good as well. You can get a generic one and then customize it slightly, but always personalize your outreach. I think LinkedIn's the best thing to do if you get recommendations on LinkedIn as well from colleagues, friends, previous managers, that really helps build your personal brand. You can also try reaching out to people online like awesome YouTubers like myself. You could drop us a comment, drop us a message, see if we can help. Honestly, the power of social networks have just made the whole process so much easier. I can't imagine what it was like back in the day, but on the resume point, a couple of really good softwares to help you, help your CV make uh, stand out, would be Novo Resume, I'll link it below, and also Canva. Canva's probably my favorite. I use Novo Resume, I had to pay for it. But if I was to do it again, I'd use Canva. I use Canva for all my YouTube thumbnails and any artwork. And they also have CV templates on there as well. 
um, which is really cool. Or you can build your build your own. I would say that's everything on the job front. And yeah, best of luck with your applications. Who knows? Keep your head down. You could be in the hot seat. So yeah. <laughs> Right, moving on to section two. And this is all around visas, which is a real common question I get asked. Um, what visas do you come on? How can I stay in Australia? And all the research I did before I came was purely through watching YouTube videos and Google searching on visas. So I'd recommend doing that as a first step, getting as much knowledge as possible. I applied for a working holiday visa. It was really quick and easy to do. Now with the pandemic, I'm not sure how easy it is to get approved or what the roadmap looks like, but I came across to Australia on a working holiday visa. I found a job through LinkedIn, actually a friend forwarded me the job, and then I applied for it, got the job, and luckily with that job, the company actually sponsored me. So you can be sponsored for X amount of years because you're employed by a company with the ultimate goal to get PR or permanent residency and then after that is citizenship. So however your journey looks will obviously vary on visas. I would say uh, come across on a working holiday visa and see where it takes you. If you're from the UK you can get a one year pretty easy then you have to do the infamous farm work. I think it's 80 days or 88 days and um, before you get your second year visa. Yeah, I didn't have to do that because I got sponsored by my job. It's in the tech industry. So again, really good industry to get into and they are currently sponsoring work in the in Australia. So yeah, research goes a long way. And yeah, again, networking, which is really, really important. On the visa side, I would say working holidays, super easy to do by yourself. It's pretty simple. If you're going for anything a bit more complicated or something which costs a bit more, such as permanent residency, the amount of information I've had to give for that and the documentation, I hired a employment specialist or an immigration agent, I think they're called. And yeah, they've really helped me a lot because they've helped get all my information together. They've helped submit the application and it's already cost me a few thousand dollars anyway for the actual application. So to hire someone else to help do it for you, I think it's really worth it if you're doing that more complicated visa side of things. Even if you're worried about visas and you have the money to spend, then I would look into an immigration specialist either in the UK or Australia, because it's really nice to have someone who's an expert in that field, they're qualified, it kind of makes sense, right? So yeah, there would be my top tips on visas. I'd also say, yeah, if you have a friend or any of your network over in Australia, chat to them about it. Everyone has gone through the same thing if they're from a different country to come to Australia and stay here for a longer period of time. So you're definitely not alone. Uh, hopefully you have someone in your network who can help. But if not, an immigration specialist is a, is a great option. Cool. We are on section three of this video, which is really around your whole social life and how to meet people. It's something I didn't really plan for. Or I didn't really watch any videos on actually, but I've kind of gone through that experience and I've got a few tips to share because when you are moving to the other side of the world, to this beautiful country up here, uh, Australia, it can be quite daunting, especially if you don't know anyone. I was lucky enough to have a very good friend living here, uh, Rob, so I managed to live with him and stay in a cupboard under the stairs, as shown in my previous video. That would be my first tip, would be your network. And again, with jobs, with visas, with socialising, anyone, any family members, a distant cousin, that's the one. If you have a friend, an old colleague, anyone who lives out here, just drop them a message and uh, just get as much information as possible. And if they have a couch to stay on, awesome. You could of course do couch surfing or look on Facebook Marketplace as well, see if there are any free rooms going. But uh, that'd be my first tip is reach out to your network for socializing. The second one would be social networks. And this is probably the biggest one. Facebook groups are massive. Say for example, if you move to Sydney, Bondi is like the place to go, I'd recommend it. There's a Bondi local loop on a Facebook group. Everything gets posted in there and it's all uh, expats, locals, big variety of people in these groups. 
with a lot of the same interests and a lot of people far away from home as well. So it's a great place to meet people, meet uh, like groups, like volleyball groups. Moving on to my next point, my next tip, I would say join a sports team, either volleyball, rugby, soccer, football, um, netball, whatever your sport is, you're most likely gonna find that as a group in Australia. And if you're not into sport, no worries. Uh, look for whatever your interests are. If it's filmmaking or photography, chess, um, I don't know, your hobbies, your needs. I would say, yeah, join a sports team. I took up rugby in Australia. It's a pretty big sport over here, but uh, that allowed me to make um, lots of friends and acquaintances through rugby, which is pretty much my friendship group over here now. Yeah, 100% recommend a sports team or a some, some kind of club or meetup where you can actually meet people who share a similar interest. It's fantastic. Yeah, Gumtree, I'd say Facebook's probably the biggest one for that. Hashtag on Instagram, or just Google searching as well for clubs if you want to reach out directly. But yeah, the, the power of the internet and social networks, fantastic. Cool, so we are up to section four in this video on my top tips on how to move to Australia. So number four is, I had quite a few questions around accommodation or where to live in Australia. I thought I'd group that all together. So again, network, it's coming up at a time and time again, but network is just so key. I stay with a friend. It's just so nice to stay with someone who you know for the first few nights or few weeks or months. I end up living there for a bit. But um, yeah, uh, network, your first one. If they have a spare couch, cupboard on the stairs, garage, stay anywhere. The second one would be like a hostel or something like that. Hostel world's awesome to book through, depending on if you enjoy hostels or not. But they are a bit cheaper. In Australia, they're pretty expensive, but it's cheaper than staying in an Airbnb, which would be the next one if you want something a bit more private. And Airbnb is awesome because it's so easy to book. Booking.com is really good for accommodation in Australia as well. So you can book through that app. Some of them have zero cancellation fees. That's really cool. Um, then I would do that to the temporary side. If you're looking to stay more permanently, then flatmatefinders.com.au is the one I used when I was moving between flats and living in different areas. There are tons of rooms available in Sydney and Flatmate Finders is probably the best way to find accommodation. Now that's, I guess, different types of accommodation which have come up. The other question around where to live in Australia. I moved to Sydney because I've always wanted to live here and my friend lived here and I also have some family members here so it just kind of made sense. It has the best weather, the best beaches, just the perfect mix of everything and I just, I just love it here. When I say best weather, it's seasonal so you actually have winter and summer which for me is really important coming from the UK because if it was hot all year round, it'd be a bit tough. I can't even say that but it's quite nice to have that dip in weather. And obviously you have all the tourist attractions, you have some amazing places to visit in New South Wales. Check out some of my other videos for those uh, places to visit. Yeah, I absolutely love it here. I couldn't imagine leaving Sydney anytime soon, but there's also Melbourne. If you're into like culture, coffee, cafes, uh, nightlife, arts, like Melbourne's awesome. Um, some beautiful scenery down there as well. And if you want somewhere a bit hotter, Queensland, like Brisbane, it's very uh, tropical. If you're more into the tropical vibes, Brisbane's really cool. And there's also a lot of heaps of jobs up there for tech, finance, and all those industries. So yeah, there would be my ideas on where to live in Australia. You also have uh, Northern Territories or Western Australia, and you have South Australia, and you have the ACT, and you have Tasmania. Uh, those places, I guess, are less big, but if you want a smaller, a less populated than the th Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, I believe. Yeah, it really depends on what vibe you're going for. And I think it all goes back down to your network and who you know in what area. For me, I think that's the biggest um, tip I could give is, is follow that. If not, I'd say Sydney, <laughs> not being biased at, at all. Uh, but there are tons of Brits and expats over here. So it just kind of makes sense. Uh, for me to live here um, and I absolutely love it. So in Sydney, eastern suburbs or northern beaches, they're two really good areas. Uh, eastern suburbs, you could do Bondi. I'm in Rose Bay at the minute. 
um, and I absolutely love it here, but then you have Manly in the northern beaches or um, yeah, tons of areas. I might make a separate video on where to live in Sydney, but um, yeah, subscribe and stay tuned for that in the future. Cool, so we're up to section five of this video on how to move and live in this awesome country of Australia. So my bonus tips, and this might sound a bit cliche or a bit cheesy, but here we go. It would be just to do it. If the pandemic taught us anything, it's stuff can change in a heartbeat. The past couple of years have just flown by. So I'd say just get your visa, book a flight, book accommodation for a couple of weeks and see where it takes you. If you're thinking about long-term, apply for jobs beforehand, reach out to people online, build your network, that can all take time, but at the end of the day, there is never the perfect time. It's always gonna to be tough, it's always gonna be tricky, but where there's a will, there's a way, and if it was easy, anyone would do it. So yeah, just pack your bags and off you go. I would say money-wise, save up as much as you can. Australia is expensive, especially if you don't live here. So if you can save, um, as much as you can save. I would say minimum you need in your bank is enough for a few weeks accommodation and a flight home. So a few thousand dollars, pounds, however that looks. I would say like $5,000 is a really nice amount to give you a couple of weeks and a flight home. But then it just depends on the lifestyle. Like if you wanna do trips, if you want, if you drink in bars, um, if you eat out a lot, a budgeting video might be a separate video, but just save as much as you can. But don't let saving hold you back because you can get a job and start saving in Australia. And then the whole, the whole economy works better because you, the wages are higher, so you get paid more, so you can afford to spend $20 on a schooner. So um, it's not $20, it's about 11. But, uh, my other bonus tip in section five, um, section five sounds like the Hunger Games. I would say pack light. And now I'm a minimalist. I actually bought this map and plant in from other rooms around the house to make it look like I have stuff. But um, yeah, I came to Australia all those years ago with just one suitcase and that's all I needed. Even that was probably a bit too much. But over time, I now have a guitar. <laughs> I bought that back from a trip. I have a whole life in Australia now, but I've built it over slowly over time and only got stuff when I need it. Um, even to the point now where I have a canoe. Never thought I'd own that in Australia, but there we go. So yeah, pack light, only bring stuff you need and you can easily pick up clothes over here. There used to be Top Man over here, but there's like Target, there's Kmart, there's H&M. And yeah, there's those common like stores where you can just pick up a t-shirt for like $5. Yeah, I wouldn't stress about bringing the whole kitchen sink with you. Kmart will be a best friend if you stay here longer term because you can get like cheaper plates, cutlery, everything to do with the house. Kmart is the way forward. Also camping equipment, Kmart is fantastic. And I might make a Kmart camping video. But yeah, those are all my bonus tips. I um, hope that you found this video useful. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. If you're new or existing subscriber, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below if you have any questions on this video and I will see you in the next one. Cheers.